Glad you could join us on this edition of Tech Trends. 2018 was a great year for the startup ecosystem. Our guest wants us to focus not just on startups in Lagos, but also on those in many other cities working hard to build something awesome. That's on the interview segment. Our tech tips is on ways to reduce exposure to phone radiation. Let's kick off the show with some tech news and updates. I am Chukomeka Agbata. Welcome to the show. The world of 3D printing is at times a tangled web of technologies, materials, and new processes and capabilities that can make navigating the 3D printing ecosystem difficult. It can be used for everything from rapid prototyping in professional design firms to DIY production and manufacturing by small-scale engineers or designers. 3D printing technology doesn't refer to one kind of manufacturing or technological process, and therefore a well-rounded understanding requires an in-depth look into an available 3D printing system, into all available 3D printing systems. Innovations, an innovative company in Lagos provides engineering prototypes and architecture models through its 3D printing lab. To make my printing perfect, there are things I need to factor in. That is the bed. This is the bed part of it. So I have to eat this bed up. So there are, these materials have different temperatures. So for example, wood, its temperature is like 220 degrees, and the bed has to be like 50 degrees. So there are different temperatures for different materials. So for example, this is ABS. I have, the bed must go up to 100 degrees Celsius, and the filament, the nozzle can heat up to 250. There's what we call calibration. That is setting this bed. It has to be leveled. If the bed is not flat, as in it's not leveled, then my printing will be bad because one part will be down, one part will be up, and I, the printing will be messed up. So now, what I have to do is, I have to take uh, this glass and set it, use this to hold the, uh, the glass up to the bed, then, once I finish calibration, I now take this uh, filament, I slot it into this part, and take it through the nozzle. So I'm going to show you the process now. Now, the filament is in now. Now, from the software, I have set my temperature to be 250 degrees and the bed to be 100. So I come here. I have my um, design saved on this SD card. So I slot it in. Okay, from my design on the system, I save it onto the SD card. And there are two ways I can do it. It's either I use USB directly to the uh, computer and fix it onto the printer or I save it on this SD card. So to make it easier for me, I save it on the SD card and I slot it into the digital screen here. So once I fill it in, I come here and set my temperature. 3D printing is also called additive manufacturing because unlike the traditional subtractive manufacturing, it doesn't remove material. It adds to it, layer after layer. In order to print something, 
First, you will need a 3D model of the object you want to create, which you can design in a 3D modeling program or use a 3D scanner to scan the object you want to print. Once your design is ready, all you need to do is import it into the open source print software. I can put it on my memory card and straight off to the 3D printers. But well, right here, even on the system, you can see some sample things that some of our students came here and worked on. But how does the printer work? Although there are several 3D printing technologies, most of them create the object by laying down many successive thin layers of a material. We have the spools and all the filaments. We roll it in, we put it in through here, the materials comes, and uh, we of course do the settings. So we set the temperature, we set the speed of the print, we set uh, the in the printer, we set the kind of material that is, uh, we are rolling in. And then from there, we can actually know exactly how long it's going to take to print whatever we want to print. So we have L 3D printer here. Uh, the uniqueness of this, looking at it, is it has two nozzles. Meaning what? It can actually print two materials on one particular design at a time. So we can run two different materials. Say, for example, I want to print wood and I want to print plastic and I want to fuse them all together okay or I want to print two materials if I want to print two materials on the same design at a time then we run it through this printer of course we have to consider so many factors while doing that we consider their temperature their temperature mustn't be too far apart we consider their um, pressure we consider so many things consider, consider the humidity also of uh, the material that we're using to print what can you do with 3d printing the possibilities with 3D printers are endless and they are now becoming commonplace in fields like engineering, product design, manufacturing and architecture. Now, with the 3D modeling uh, process, you are able to cut a lot of cost out and you are able to create the working prototype, probably it might not be Excellent, but a working prototype that brings your idea to life. A lot of uh, people come here and say, can you make us this part? Because we have a manufacturing plan that has not been operating because we can't get this part uh, for a while because the company that was manufacturing that part has closed down. Now, this, this 3D technology gives the opportunity to revive those plants. So, in, in one way, it's just like asking, will computer make accountants irrelevant, right? It could actually make them more efficient, right? So the same way this technology is can actually breathe life into obviously dying processes because it can make their cost a little bit more contained because you can now use the technology for repair, for hastening a lot of things. 3D printing started in the 80s, but a lot has changed since then. 3D printers offer amazing results and let you create anything you can imagine.